Welcome to Noir Alley. I'm your host, Eddie Muller. Today's film seems to abandon all the criteria typically associated with film noir. It's A Kiss Before Dying, released by United Artists in 1956, the tail end of the original noir era. No trench coats, fedoras, and rainy streets in this one. It was shot in sun-baked Arizona in vivid color and cinemascope. But its protagonist, a young social-climbing sociopath, is noir to his hollow core. When he starred in this controversial film, Robert Wagner was being groomed for matinee idol status, like his handsome 50s colleagues, Rock Hudson and Tony Curtis. He played a heel in his previous film, The Mountain, opposite his mentor, Spencer Tracy. But this role would dump a truckload of mud on his clean-cut image. His legion of female fans must have been shocked and devastated. The film is based on a bestseller from 1953, recognized as the year's best first novel by the Mystery Writers of America. For its author, Ira Levin, it was the start of a prolific career that included such classics as Rosemary's Baby, The Stepford Wives, and The Boys from Brazil, all made into successful movies, as were his plays, No Time for Sergeants and Death Trap. Levin was a master of high-concept suspense with a satirical wit that made his books a pleasure to read. Lawrence Roman's adaptation of A Kiss Before Dying is faithful to the novel with a couple of notable exceptions that I'll mention on the other side. The plot follows the nefarious exploits of college student Bud Corliss, who will stop at nothing to gain social standing and the affluence that comes with it. Bud is a gender switch on a familiar noir character, the femme fatale, who uses sex appeal to get what she wants. Bud is the definition of a homme fatale, the last man any woman should meet. Daryl Zanuck, the head of 20th Century Fox, bought Levin's novel while it was still in galley form, and from the start, it was intended as a vehicle for Robert Wagner. But by the time it finally went into production, it wouldn't be for Fox but for independent Crown Productions, run by Zanuck's son-in-law, Robert Jacks. Zanuck was practically the associate producer, since he lent Jacks several other Fox actors in addition to Wagner, Jeffrey Hunter, Virginia Leith, and Joanne Woodward, in only her second film role. Joining these fresh-faced youngsters were a couple of old pros. George McCready plays the wealthy copper baron whose fortune Bud covets, and Mary Astor plays Bud's mother, whose lower-class status he detests, despite his mama's boy act. This was the first film for Astor since Any Number Can Play in 1949. Wagner, a big movie fan, was tickled at the prospect of having Mary Astor playing his mother, which was entirely plausible. She was 49 at the time. He was 25. The pivotal role of Dwight Powell was to be played by Martin Milner, until scheduling conflicts led to Robert Quarry being cast instead. This is his first credited movie role. The film was controversial for its use of the word pregnant, which, as you'll quickly see, figures prominently in the plot. It was quite a battle to get it past what was left of the production code, and in some parts of the country, believe it or not, the word had to be deleted from the soundtrack. Joanne Woodward plays the pregnant woman, and for her, the film was not a pleasant experience. Years later, she was still calling this her worst film, even though she got good notices for her performance. The film was reviewed favorably at the time, and its reputation has increased over the years. Now, a lot of critics see A Kiss Before Dying as a thriller that's also a not-so-subtle rebuke to 50s-style American materialism. It was the first feature for director Gert Oswald, and his style here is very reminiscent of another director of the era who specialized in soap operas with a serrated edge. In fact, the pithiest way of describing A Kiss Before Dying is to call it a homicidal Douglas Sirk movie. Photographed on location in Tucson, Arizona, with deluxe color cinematography by the great Lucian Ballard, here is A Kiss Before Dying. 